So we all know that this is the quadratic equation, and we can solve this one by factoring, and we end up with two solutions. So it's not too much fun, right? So this is what I did. I decided to put absolute value around this x. And guess what? We will end up with six solutions, just like Michael Jordan, six championships. And I was really surprised, and then I tried it with uh, different numbers. No, we don't end up with six solutions all the time by putting an absolute value around this x in the quadratic equation. I know, you guys want to try this first, so go ahead, pause the video, and let me know how it goes. Ready? All right, now, let's go over this, and I will show you my original thoughts. Firstly though, of course, to take care of this absolute value, we can use the piecewise definition. We know that absolute value of x, this right here, equals either we get negative x, and that's when x is less than 0, or we just get x, and that's when x is non-negative. So we'll just consider cases, but let me tell you, no, we will, end, we will not end up with 6 solutions by doing this. And I also try with another one, because we can write absolute value of x as square root of x squared. Yeah? And then I put this back here, and then I isolate that part and then try to square both sides. And you can try it, you might end up with like a quarty equation. So that's at most 4 solutions, right? How did we get 6 though? Here is the key. Of course, you know, in order to have six solutions, some of them have to be complex. We have two real solutions and four complex solutions. To start, I'm just going to let x equals a complex number in the general form, and that's a plus b i. And keep in mind, a and b are real numbers. So I'm just going to put them right there. Right here, we have x squared, which is a plus b i, and then I have to square that, and then plus 5, absolute value, a plus b i, and then minus 6, that's equal to 0. So for this part, we can just expand it, no worries. And for this part, how do we take care of absolute value of a complex number though? Well, let me go over that real quick. When we have absolute value of a complex number, remember absolute value measures the distance. So if you take a look on the complex plane, here's the real axis, here's the imaginary one. A plus B I, let's say, is somewhere here. Well, this means from here to here is A, and then from here to here, we have B. And to get the distance from the origin, as we can see, we'll have a right triangle, so the hypotenuse is square root of this square plus that square. So a squared plus b squared. And that's what is for the absolute value of that, square root of a squared plus b squared. So let's go ahead and just work this out. This is going to give us, multiply this out, a squared first. And then I will have 2 times this and that, so plus 2abi. And lastly, square this, b squared, and then also i squared. Continue, we have plus 5. This part is this, so square root of a squared plus b squared. And then finally, we have the minus 6, and that is equal to 0. Now let's take a look right here. We have the real part and also the complex part. Both parts have to be equal to 0 because we have 0 on the right-hand side. So let's put on the real part first, which is a squared. And then this right here is also real because i squared is negative 1. So that will give us minus b squared. And then this is real. Likewise, minus 6 is very real as well. So plus 5 square root of a squared plus b squared, and then minus 6. This has to be equal to 0. Now for the complex part. We just have 2abi, so that means 2ab has to be equal to 0. And that's the second condition that we need. This right here is actually not so bad thanks to this condition here, because either we have a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. We just have to do case work. So let's go ahead and consider case 1. And case 1, let me just start with, let's say, a equals 0. Now we just have to plug in 0 into all the a's to set up the equation. 
we will get negative b squared plus 5. This is 0 already, so we just have square root of b squared, and then minus 6, and that's equal to 0. Now, keep in mind, b is a real number, because we said x is equal to a plus bi, a and b are both real. So that means the square root of b squared is just absolute value of b. And how do we take of this? Consider cases. Either when b is greater than 0 or when b is less than 0. So here we have negative b squared. And then if b is greater than 0, absolute value of b is just b. So we'll just have plus 5b and then minus 6. That's equal to 0. Now solve this regularly. I will divide everybody by negative first though. So we get b squared minus 5b plus 6 is equal to 0. Factor it b minus 2 times b minus 3. This means b equals 2, b equals 3. Both work because b is greater than 0. They are both positive. Now, second case, b is less than 0. I will tell you, you will just get negative 2 and negative 3, but let me show you. This stays negative b squared, but absolute value of b, when b is less than 0, we will get negative b. And then we still have the 5, and then minus 6, that's equal to 0. Alright, divide everybody by negative. b squared plus 5b plus 6 equal to 0. Factor it, b plus 2 times b plus 3. So that means b is negative 2 or negative 3. Alright, plus minus 2 plus minus 3. Okay, so that's the first case. Now, case 2. And this is the case when b is equal to 0. Do the same thing. Put 0 into all the b's. We get a squared, and then we have plus 5 square root of a squared, and then minus 6. That's equal to 0. Again, a is real, so that means this is absolute value of a. More cases. When a is greater than 0, that will give us a squared plus 5a, and then minus 6 is equal to 0. Let's see, this is a plus 6 times a minus 1 equal to 0. a will be negative 6 or positive 1. We don't want negative 6 because we want a to be positive, so 1 from here. Alright, finally, a less than 0. So we will have a squared, this is minus a, and then we have the 5, and then minus 6, that's equal to 0. Factory again, you get negative 1, by the way. Anyway, you get a minus 6 times a plus 1. Either you have 6 or negative 1. But we want negative right here, so this is not it. So as you can see, we have all these choices. Finally, though, I will have to tell you what x is. Ladies and gentlemen, x is equal to. We have two real solutions, and that's when a is equal to 1 or negative 1. And that's when b is equal to 0. So we have plus or minus 1. Secondly, when a is 0, we get a purely imaginary solution, 2 and negative 2. So let's put on plus or minus 2. And then finally, 3 and negative 3. Well, these are the b values. That's the complex part. I almost forgot the i and i. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the six solutions for that equation. So satisfying, that's it.